So we want to introduce maybe a couple of really simple fun activities that you can weave throughout the programme over the week. And you might decide to do it as a bigger activity, you might decide to do it maybe as a competition. Um, but a really simple pack of cards can be a wonderful tool for creating opportunities for small groups, either individually, playing something like solitaire, which I absolutely love playing, um, working in twos or in threes or in fours or in fives. There are a number of different card games. We've only picked a few really simple ones today to maybe just demonstrate and give you an example of. All you need to do is Google card games and you'll find loads of ways of playing cards. And actually, a really interesting way of learning how to play a card game is to teach somebody else how to play it. So maybe even ask students to research games that they might like, find a game that's maybe new and interesting, and have to teach it to somebody else. Because it can be a really interesting way of building your communication skills, but creating a space where you're the expert, and you're trying things out differently. And there are loads of other versions of card games you can get online. This is just using a standard 52 deck um, with four suits in it. But also the fact that they're very numerical, they're quite visual, um, and that sense of four different suits, the four different suits even having 10 numbers and then the, the, the sweet card, seed cards, all of those can really work really effectively in, in building it up. So the first is one of the simplest games, and I think one of the key skills in playing cards is turn taking. And there's a whole series of micro skills that happen in a lot of these games. Turn taking, uh, managing frustration, following rules, um, patience, um, pausing, waiting, observation, strategic thinking, decision making, a huge body of social skills that sit underneath a really simple task. So what we're going to, the first game we're going to play is Snap. And Snap is a really, but again, and a really simple example of some of the challenges for autistic young people playing something like snap can be the spontaneous piece of it. And if you're going to snap when the other person's hand is down, that sense of spontaneous touch can be too much. You can also play snap with, um, you know, those kind of light um, spatulas that really yeah. they're they're very um, they're very light. They're not yeah. like wire or anything. They're mm. very light plastic, yeah. so that you don't have the the touch. Yeah. So that you have to actually there's a bit of time. It delay. lends itself to a bit yeah. of delay because you have to pick it up and then yeah. you have to you have yeah. to bring it down on the card. Yeah. So there's a bit more. Um, I suppose notice that this is going to happen. Yeah, and another way I've seen it playing is, and we'll have the, the deck in the centre now, and again, all I'm going to do is divide the pack in three. But again, even shuffling the pack, dividing the pack out, can be another skill, and it's my turn now, but it'll be Hannah's turn next. And that one, two, three, that rhythmic nature of it, again, can be hugely calming, and you create that sense of uh, space and a routine and an organised structure as you go through it. And the ultimate goal of SNAP is to get all the cards. To get all of the cards and get as many cards as you possibly can. So we each turn take. So remember, decide even language like clockwise or anti clockwise can be really kind of challenging. We're going to go clockwise, so it's go from me to Hannah to Anne, and we go around. And you can do it as fast. And it's important to remember that you're not allowed to look at your own oh, yeah. cards yeah. as you're yeah. doing there. You, you, you have the deck this side up, so yeah. you're not seeing them. Yeah. So you can't plan. So you can't be doing like right now. If, for example, if I went, I know what's happening, mm -hmm. and I have it in advance of other people, I can go and snap. So the idea is that everyone else gets the same opportunity to snap. You can see us all slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Tension is building because of the... <laughs> in the routine of it. Now, I'm hugely curious, what happens if we don't get a snap, will we just divide them up again, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Shuffle the deck. 
<laughs> that it was very intense. <laughs> <laughs> People are good at something. <laughs> so whoever gets all the cards, I can go next. Yeah. Because you have to keep, you have to keep playing them. Yeah. And you shuffle them now then? You can, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah I probably would. I think you'll find, again, with all of these games, there tends to be a kind of a, maybe a regional or a, a local way of playing the game. There tends to be adaptations. The key is, whatever the rules are, that they're agreed in advance of playing the game. And it's that connection, even that moment where Hannah won, I'm going to not technically end it, say Snap Hannah didn't, she just put her hand out. I so. <laughs> and that's a really good example of how you start to have that negotiation skills happening. <laughs> and, and that can be part of the fun of the game, where it's really just around creating that really safe moment for a sense of camaraderie, a sense of a shared ownership of a really simple task. And you absolutely, like, I was even trying to follow the rhythm yeah. of it. And then I was pausing going, is it my turn? Mm -hmm. You know, even that rhythm, all of those small micro skills, observational skills that you build in a really simple task like this is really where the, the golden moments for learning are. And that sense of that was great fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you actually do very quickly get lost in that activity. Mm -hmm. So that's a really simple example of snap. We were going to look at Go Fish, Go as, well. fish as well. Yeah. So for Go Fish, you need the full deck of cards. And just to say, for younger children, you know, they may not have done numbers seven, eight, nine. If they're four or five, you know, if they're junior infants, um, junior infants would do numbers one to five. Senior would do six to ten. So you know, they may not have done your their their, their six to ten yet, um, or they may just you know find that mm. difficult. So you can actually just take out the numbers that they don't know. So you could mm. just have. Uh, a, a smaller deck of cards of two, three, and four, mm. and five maybe, and you could have king and queen because they're quite easily identifiable. Yeah. Jack a little bit harder because we don't really have a lot of experience mm. of a jack, you know, yeah. we don't yeah. really know what that is. Um, but in stories and stuff, you can very easily identify king and queen. So you can play all these games with younger children as well, just um, with a smaller deck of cards. You can also get really big cards, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and you, they don't, um, you, you, you can get them without numbers as well, you can just get yeah. them with the, with different patterns or the, the same kind of pictures on them, so that would be yeah. how you snap yeah. if it's two of the yeah. same pictures. Um, you can get them farm themed or fairy tale themed, you can get all, all different, I have Christmas ones that are um, shaped like all different Christmas characters. Okay. So go fish then, everyone starts with the same amount of cards, so again, rules will vary depending on um, you know, how you play them within your own group of friends or your family or that. So we'll go with nine cards each. So one, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thank you. So you could have five cards each, you could do six, we're doing nine. Then what you do with the rest of the cards, again, some people just leave the deck in the middle. I like to spread it out um, so that it becomes like the pond. And it's nice that these are blue um, because it's like the color of the water. So we're going fishing in the pond. And you can mix them all up here like this. So what you're doing with your deck of cards when you get it is you turn it around because you need to see um, what cards you have. And you immediately start to pair them off. So if you have two fives, you put them down in a pair face down like this. If you have uh, two fours, you take them out and you put them down face down in a pair like this beside you. And then what you're left with is all just individual cards that don't have a match. So we'll start, uh, I'll start actually. Can I ask kind of the way yes, then, if I put down two pairs, do I take up two from here, no? No. Okay. No, no, no. The goal is to get rid of all my cards. The goal is to get rid of all your cards. cards. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the goal is to get rid of your cards. So obviously if you happen to have lots of pairs and you're only left with two or three cards at the end here, the game's going to be much easier okay. for you. But I have five cards, so I now have to get pairs for each of these cards. Okay. That's what we're going swimming for in, or going fishing for, I mean, in the pond. Mm -hmm. So I'll start and I'll ask the group, does anyone have any eights? And if you have an eight, you have to give it to me. Okay. You can't lie. And if you don't, you say, go fish. Does go anyone fish. have any eights? Go fish. Go fish. 
So then I'm going fishing and I can choose any card I want. I hope and pray that this is an eight. It's not an eight, but if it's a card that maybe matches another card that I have, that's okay, I can put them down in a pair, however it's not. So I have to keep it, so now I have another card that I have to pair. So right. it gets a bit more difficult. Can I go next? Yes. Yeah, okay, uh, a five. Go fish. Oh, thank you. So I just take that yeah, I don't go fishing. No, you don't go fishing. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone have a two? Go fish. Go fish. Does anyone have a jack? Does anyone have a king? Go fish. Oh. Does anybody have a, a six? Does anyone have a ten? Fish. Anyone have an ace? Does anybody have a four? Go fish. Go fish. Does anyone have a king? Go fish. Go fish. Anyone have a nine? Go fish. Go fish. And this is an interesting part of the game. You're trying to remember what other people were looking for. Because if you pick that up, and you might think, oh, did Hannah ask for a four? Maybe I might ask for a four, etc. So you're, yes. there's a memory part of the game as well mm -hmm. that really develops your memory skills. Um, and you have to be careful that the player beside you isn't looking in at your cards. <laughs> you just have to hold it back carefully. I hope On you're camera, not. looking I in <laughs> at your cards. <laughs> Does anyone have a three? Go fish. Go fish. Does anyone have an eight? Go fish. Go fish. A seven? Go fish. Does anybody have a queen? Go fish. Go fish. And the goal is that you keep playing until all the cards are gone from the centre and then the person with the least amount of cards left in their hand wins. Isn't that correct? Yeah, or if someone might, someone might get rid of all their cards. Oh yeah, they Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who's going to have a hammer? I think it's fine. Does anyone have a king? Go fish. Go fish. Uh, anyone have a three? Go fish. Go fish. Thank you. Anyone have a two? Go fish. Go fish. Does anyone have a nine? And this is where you start managing the part of the game that's frustrating. <laughs> because you had get very few cards and then suddenly you have more cards and all that starts to build up. So does anyone have a four? Go fish. Does anyone have a four? No, they have cards. Oh, what's yours? I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> My mistake. I even have a seven. Go, Go fish. fish. <laughs> I need a managing conflict as part of the game as well. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm doing> <laughs> attention. Managing rage is also part of the game. <laughs> so the last game I'm going to look at really quickly is a game that used to be referred to as Old Maid. Um, and uh, we were referring it to as the, as the Odd One Out. And it's a really, really simple game. And again, with all of these games, it's exploring the associated skills that are developed as part of the game. Now, that last game was a really interesting one. Again, there was a very obvious sense of fun, there was a sense of excitement, but also there was a sense of competition. And sometimes we don't realize how competitive we are until we're engaged in a simple example. And some really interesting parts of our character can be presented in that. So if you're using this as part of your um, challenge for the program, be aware of that, and as the facilitator, notice those things. Losing a game can be a real challenge in these activities as well. And sometimes people find it very hard to lose. They find that very difficult. Um, and you need to observe and manage that process. So if somebody is losing a lot, you might change the activity, you might manage the amount of time they get to play that game. 
because that frustration can then permeate other activities um, that they're, they're, they're starting to engage with as well. I know certainly other games, like one of my favourite card games, and it would be much more appropriate to some of the older students, is 45. A um, little bit more complicated, lots of strategic thinking, very simple rules, but great for kind of a small group of people playing it. Um, but again, a really, really lovely game for uh, turn taking, strategic thinking, you're looking at numbers in sequences, um, but there's an awful lot of them micro skills that are developed as part of it. Um, and losing, how do you find it? Either of you lose games? Do you, are you good losers? Are you more challenging around losing a game? Or any particular yeah. games you really don't like to lose? No, I don't mind. It's, I don't mind actually. It doesn't. Yeah, I kind of. I yeah. don't be competitive, but um, I think I used to. I definitely, when I was younger, I used to find losing very difficult. Mm. Um, I think as I grew older, it's not so much of a big deal now. But yeah, I do get a sense of I really yeah. don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to our last game that we're going to explain is a really simple game called. It would have traditionally been known as. Um, some people might know it as the um, Old Maid but we call it uh, Odd One Out. And the idea being that you can take any particular card, it doesn't really matter. I'm just taking the last card on the pack, which is the Queen. So I know now that the entire pack will break up into pairs, and there will be one Queen left over that's not a pair. So depending on the number of players, whether it's two or three players, I just divide the entire pack into uh, three groups. Now, the first thing each player will do is very quickly divide their cards into pairs. And what you're doing there is, it's a nice moment at the beginning of the game where they're reducing the size of their pack, but also they're just dividing everything off and that categorizing and grouping can be uh, very calming in the game as well. I suppose the other thing to remember that depending on how games are organized, that sometimes there is one winner, and maybe if two or three people are playing, two or three people are losing the game. If this is an interesting flip on that experience, because in this, there's one of the three of us will be left with that card, the pair of that queen. So there's only one person who will be left with the odd one out, and the odd card out, and then the other two will not. So there's actually two winners, and one person who doesn't win this game. So you have to really keep an eye on using how you organise games, because for many of us, um, and it you know, varies from person to person and sometimes it's only when you're playing simple games like this you realise that you're a lot more competitive than you thought. Or there was a really, there's a really simple um, activity I used to use a lot when I was training teachers and it was, it was a really simple activity where you would give kind of three images and you would look at an activity where you were counting triangles in an image and you would have to count how many triangles were in that overall image. And most people would fit into three groups. They would either be in group A, which meant that, and I was tend to be in that group, I assumed there was a trick in there. So I would assume no matter how many I count, I'm going to naturally miss one. And there's going to be a trick, so I would just give up. I go, oh no, there's just going to be a trick in there. There are the people who would be looking to see who else in the group to think they might know, and try and go along with them. And then there would be people who do, don't you dare tell me how many triangles are in this. They are so competitive themselves, they want to work it out themselves. And we all have our own competitive nature. Um, and sometimes simple card games can really help you explore that a little bit and help you build a whole series of skills around communication skills, around navigation, around conflict management. But you also need to work, watch the shadow of those skills. So there can be frustration, there can be annoyance, there can be splitting. Um, if Anne and Hannah can maybe were, were winning a game and I was losing, I could feel left out or excluded. So keeping an eye on all of those um, skills can be a really interesting way of exploring it using a really simple game. So all we're doing then is we've divided our cards all into pairs. And we each take a turn to take a card from the player next to us until the goal is that we end up with all of our cards gone and one of us will have uh, an extra card. 
So we will start then, Hannah, you will take a card from me, mm -hmm. and we'll go that way then. Okay. And then I'm looking to see if that card pairs yeah. with any that I have. So then I turn to Anne, and she takes a card yeah. from me. So Hannah's always taking from me, Anna's always taking from Hannah, mm -hmm. and I take from Anne. We're nearly now at the end of the game, so we're at the last few, so we know that Hannah has one, I have two and Anna's two, so it's this last round then that we kind of work it all out. So Hannah's going to take one from me. So Hannah's after getting a pair, so it's now either myself or Anne, so I have to take one from Anne. So either I'm going to get an odd pair, and we'd have to go back and forward. But no, I got the pair, so Anne, you're left with the last queen, which is the pair of the second or the first queen. So again, it's a really interesting game because it builds up all of those skills, but what we would really actively encourage you to do is to find loads of different games. And the idea of teaching a card game to somebody else, it's a lovely activity. We've introduced it in our school at lunchtime. And it's a really lovely activity for students to do at break time, where they can have a really simple game of cards, and it allows them to interact and engage with other people, while at the same time getting some air, getting outside. Um, and again, just in the context of COVID, just kind of think about um, hygiene and sanitization yeah. after the cards and all of that, just to be a little bit more yeah. cautious. So we hope you enjoyed that, and happy game playing.